welcome everyone welcome welcome to homestead heart and today i am going to be making one of my favorite recipes this is going to be a whiting pot pie yes fish in a pot pie <laughs> what yep so let me go ahead and share with you some of the uh ingredients or the ingredients that i'm going to be using today to start i do have some extra virgin olive oil I'm going to be using some whiting fish. I'm going to be using about three whiting fillets, okay? I'm going to be using some salt, a little pepper. Cayenne is my choice. You can use white pepper, whatever kind you prefer, okay? I'm also going to be using uh, one to two cloves of garlic. I'm going to use some Yukon Gold potatoes. These are my favorites. I am not a... Um, a fan I, well I like red potatoes but the Yukon Gold is my absolute favorite these have been washed already and I have given these a nice cup I mean a nice cut and a rinse and I just rinsed them to get some of that extra starch off of them but they have already been rinsed okay so that's the potatoes I'm gonna also be using a couple of cups of mixed vegetables now these vegetables can be what you like for me i'm using broccoli i'm using cauliflower i'm using green beans i'm using red peppers i'm using carrots and i'm also going to be using some onion now if you're going to be using a regular onion you can use about one half of a large onion or in my case, I'm going to be using a full cup of pearl onions. I love these little babies in my pot pies. Oh my goodness, they just so good. So I'm going to be using those in my pot pie. I'm going to also be using some Philadelphia cream cheese. Yes, Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia cream cheese. The other brands, they just don't have that flavor like the Philadelphia cream cheese does. And also, I'm going to be using some sour cream, all right? So, and, oh, how could I forget? I'm also going to be using some butter. I'm going to be using some flour. I'm going to be using some vegetable broth. You can use chicken. You can use beef. Whatever kind of broth you love, you can use it. And you're also going to need some butter, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move my potatoes to the side. I've already got those chopped or cut and ready to go. And they are a rough cut too. Look at how my pieces look. You know, they're not real small. I love, I want to taste my vegetables. I like chunky vegetables. Okay. So the potatoes look good. I'm going to sit my onion out of the way. I'm going to move my vegetables out of the way. And my fish is still on the frozen side. Okay. And the reason being, it's easier to cut when it's frozen. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those. I'm cutting those into nice big chunks, okay? Now, once I get them cut and they thaw out a little more, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get all of those bones, those little pin bones that you typically will find in the whiting. I'm going to get those out, okay? So this is my fish, and I'm going to cut three fillets this way, okay? show you what they look like see how i'm cutting them this is better to cut if the fish still has if it's still a little frozen not solid but just a little frozen okay all right so i'm gonna let these hang out while i do everything else it will not take these long to unthaw at all if you had know anything about white fish it unthaws at the drop of a dime okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get these with a little salt just a little bit of salt over each one y'all did i tell y'all i like cayenne pepper okay I, I like cayenne pepper what can i say but i'm just gonna lightly dust these with cayenne not a lot just a lot a little just a little bit just a teeny teeny bit okay you know how we folks are from louisiana okay so now these are seasoned I'm going to wait for these to unthaw a little more, and then I'm going to get those in my frying pan, and I will get those sautéed up with some olive oil, and then I'll bring you back, and I'll show you what we do next steps, all right? Okay, we're back. 
All right, so now what I have done, I have gone ahead, and these pieces are not 100% unthawed, but I'm putting them in skin side down, okay? And these are gonna have a slight cook on them because they will finish baking off in the oven. Let's turn that down. And I got some olive oil, a couple of tablespoons, and I also have a tablespoon of butter in this pan, okay? Let me show you what this looks like. Show you what this looks like. So these are gonna cook for about one minute on each side. Now they're still slightly frozen, okay? You gonna cook frozen fish? Yes. And you'll see why here in just a second. So it's, and it's not rock hard either, okay? It's not rock hard, but it is, it still has some ice in it. And that's good, that's gonna help this fish to hold on to its shape because this is gonna go through a cooking process twice, all right? So now I'm cooking it for about a minute on this side on a medium low heat. In fact, I'll set the timer. It's, been, it's gonna be a little longer than a minute on this side, but this is skin side down first, okay? And this is in some olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. And it smells so delicious. I only seasoned it with a little salt and pepper, cayenne pepper. And I am going to turn these over in a few seconds, okay? All right, so let me show you. I got my tongue. All right, so these are still cooking. And I'm going to let them sit for about two minutes. I decided that two minutes would be better since it is on a medium low heat, okay? The fire's not up really high on these. See? Look at there. It's not up really high. It's on a medium low. So that's what we're cooking it on. All right? I'm going to give that a full two minutes on that medium low. And then we're going to get them flipped and turned. All right, so it's been two minutes, skin side down. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those up and give them a turn. Now maybe you haven't noticed, they are no longer frozen. <laughs> Let me just turn those. And these have no coating on them, just the fish. This is such a delicate fish. Now you see why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. Turn those over and allow those to cook. Now, one minute on this side. And once they're done, I'll bring you back. All right, so we're back, it's been a minute. These have finished searing, and look, they are so tender, y'all. You gotta be careful with whiting. This little fish here, this little flaky white fish here, you just can't do it any kind of way. You got to be gentle. Okay? Just putting these pieces on here like this. And I'm going to do about four pieces, three to four pieces of this whiting fish. Okay? Three to four pieces of the fish. Come on. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to do this and hold the camera too. All right, and that's how they look, okay? So now what I'm gonna do into this same pan right here, I'm gonna move this whiting. I'm gonna finish, I've already finished cooking all of the fish, so I'm just gonna move that to the side. And in this same pan now, I am going to go ahead and add my potatoes. All right, sorry, so let me show you that. Adding to the same pan, I am going to add my one cup of pearl onion. I don't know what you could see. Okay, one cup of pearl onion is going into this pan here in the oil. I'm going to add also my garlic. And I'm just going to give that a quick cough, getting it all coated in olive oil. Look at that. Sorry, 
about that. Okay, so the onions are in. Now, I am going to go ahead and add now my potatoes. Let me get those added. I'm going to give those a quick toss as well. That looks like All right, y'all, I'm sorry I keep dropping you. I don't know why, but it keeps falling. <laughs> okay, so now let's try this again. Get those stirred in. I'm going to reduce this to a medium low heat. So these potatoes are going to have to cook in this oil this olive oil uh, about five minutes and all of this is one pan too this is all one pan that I'm cooking everything in before it goes in the oven if you actually had a if you were doing this in a cast iron skillet you could actually do all of this in the cast iron and put your pie crust over the top of your cast iron skillet as well okay so I'm just letting all of this marry together. I'm going to do this for about five minutes. Okay? Let that continue to cook for five whole minutes. Onion, garlic, everything hanging out in here together. This is going to be really good. All right, so we're just going to let that sit five minutes, and we'll be back. All right, so just look at the onions and those delicious-looking Yukon gold potatoes. They've been in here now for about two minutes. I'm going to constantly toss those and just let them continue to cook in the pan. Oh, they look so good, y'all, and they smell good as well. All right, I'll bring you back here. Okay, and just... so we're back. So now what I'm going to do is add to this, I'm going to add the butter now, okay? I'm going to come right in the middle, and I am going to add four tablespoons of butter, okay? Right in third. Four tablespoons of butter. Now, mix that around because I want my pan to have butter all over the pan, okay? Now, if you don't want to use four tablespoons of real butter, not margarine, butter, okay? No margarine, butter. <laughs> Remember that commercial? Rich, smooth. Creamy, hideous butter. All right, so to that, I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to add in my vegetables. And again, y'all, this is going to be roughly about two and a half cups of vegetables. And again, I'm using broccoli and carrots and peppers. And I washed them, but I made sure that they drained all the water out. Okay? You know what? Look at that. See if I can pick this show you this pan. Look at that. Doesn't it look good? Beautiful. Oh no. Okay. I lost the pepper. All right. So I'm going to toss all of this in the butter. Now, here's the beautiful part. Right there in the center, I'm going to add my flour. And this is about four tablespoons of flour, okay? Gonna make some room for the flour because I want it to be on the bottom of the pan, right there with all of the rest of the oil. Okay? Ah, look at that. I'm just gonna toss that in the oil down there. And this is gonna make a nice, thick, creamy broth, okay? Now you can make this slurry 
um, before you put it in the vegetables, but it works just fine doing it this way. Just toss everything in the flour. Don't want to lose any more veggies. Look uh, at that. Nice and tossed in. Everything's in there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that I have now added that. I'm going to add my broth. And this is going to be roughly about two cups of vegetable broth. Okay. Let me measure it for you, okay? I don't typically measure. You know, when you're cooking something, you, you kind of get used to just, you know, you pour it in. You get it in. You get what you need in there, right? All right, so as you can see, I just added two cups of vegetable broth to my mixture and I'm going to stir this and this because I got the flour in this is going to turn this into a delicious creamy creamy type of a, a sauce okay so we're going to do one better yep we're going to do one better let me bring you close so you can see that okay I don't want you to miss all of this goodness all right look at that I look good Look at this sauce that's being made from the flour and the vegetable broth, okay? So I'm just gonna, whew, let me zoom out some, how about that? All right, so I'm gonna toss all of that in the broth that I am making. Y'all, nothing to me tastes better than homemade vegetable or, or fish, whiting or chicken, turkey, pot pie, I love it. Those are my favorites, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my other ingredients added, the cream cheese and the sour cream, but I'm gonna turn that up to a medium heat. And that's gonna start to bubble. I'm gonna preheat my oven, by the way, to 400 degrees. Cause this is gonna go in a preheated oven. 400 to degrees, okay. So, see how that's thickening up? Y'all, oh my goodness, look at that. Look at how thick that is. Look it. Look it. Look it. Ah, yummy. Mmm. Yes, creamy. All right, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to get you back up there. <laughs> and then I'll bring you back in just a moment. Okay, so everything looks so nice and so creamy. Let me show you. This has been cooking now like this for about three minutes, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a toss. And you wanna stir it so it don't stick. I didn't stir it because I was adjusting the camera, having camera issues. But anyway, you wanna stir it, but look at how creamy that sauce is, okay? Oh yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to add my cream cheese. Now cream cheese is measured in, oh I got a mess to clean up here. Cream cheese is going to be measured by these little pats here. <laughs> and I don't really measure how much cream cheese I'm going to use. So let me just show you what I'm going to use, okay? Grab me a knife. I'm going to use about this much. I don't know how much that is, but that's what I'm using. Now, if you want more, perfect, add more. But that's what I'm using. If you don't want it at all, you can leave it out. But I'm adding cream cheese. I love, actually, y'all, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm going to add the whole thing. So that was probably about a half a block of cream cheese right there. Now I'm going to add in my sour cream. How much sour cream do you add? Just watch me. Because all I can tell you is this is how I add it. Okay? So I'm going to take my spoon. I'm going to get a clean spoon actually. Rinse it off. You remember that <laughs> comedy show? When grandma said, rent your ram and rent it off. I know a lot of people laughed at that, but that was my Madea all day. 
All right, so now, and my dear, what do you mean? <laughs> so now I'm gonna just, this is what I add. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what that measures out to be. Maybe it's probably like a cup of sour cream that goes in here, but that's what I add. You can measure out a cup or less, kind of play it by ear, see what you like, okay? So let me go ahead and get that mixed in. I'm gonna turn this down to a medium low heat now, and I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in to my vegetables. Okay, everything is looking so good, so delicious, and it smells so good. Now, I am going to add a little bit of salt to this, okay? Probably maybe about a half a teaspoon of salt, but that's all. And I'm gonna give it another toss. That's just gonna make it just that much more creamier. Look at that. Just that perfect balance right there. It's not too wet, not too dry. that Georgia bone pot pie, y'all. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead now and get my fish added. Okay. So now I'm adding my fish. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my fish pieces inside. Okay. And again, that is about three pieces of whiting. Okay. Let me tilt that up so you can see what that looks like. So I got the fish in. And now I'm not going to do a hard mix on this, all right? I'm just going to kind of fold this in to my pot pie mixture. Nothing too rough because, you know, whiting is so delicate. You got to be gentle, y'all. You got to be gentle with this white. Okay? Now, I got that all folded. Fold this in. And I said I wasn't going to do it. But I got to do it. Got to do it. Got to add a little more. Not a lot, just a little, <laughs> just a little, just a little. Okay, got my cayenne pepper, and on top of that cayenne, I'm going to add in some Cajun seasoning. You can choose whatever kind of Cajun seasoning you want, okay? Today, I don't have any of that black magic, but today I'm going to add in just about maybe about a teaspoon of uh, some Tony Saturus to that. And then I'm gonna add in, you know what? I have fresh basil in my garden. Let me go get some basil. I was gonna use the dry stuff. Nope, I got fresh, hold up. Okay, I'm back. So I went out and got some fresh basil. Let me, all right. So what I'm gonna do now, before I cut this basil, I am going to loosen up my pot pie mixture just a little bit. It's really, really thick because I added in the uh, sour cream and the uh, cream cheese and plus the potatoes are in here. So it's making it thicken up. And if you want it that thick, that is perfectly fine, y'all. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do, just to loosen it up a little bit, I added two cups. But remember I say I kind of add it and play it by ear. So what I'm gonna do now is add a little more, and that's probably a fourth of a cup that I just added, just to loosen it. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's the consistency that I am looking for. That's what I'm looking for. All right, mm. ooh, that smells so good, ooh, that smells so good. The only thing I wish I had to put in here was some smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. But I'm all out. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my basil put in here. Clip off these stems. All I want is the leaves. Ah, fresh basil. And it smells so good. And if you grow basil, you know what I'm talking about. It smells so good. All right, so let me get my little leaves rolled up here. So I can get these babies chopped. Come on, cooperate. What 
try. Oh, I wish I could smell this. Fresh basil smells so good. And this basil is probably going to add up to be maybe a half a teaspoon, if that. Not a lot, but that's fine. Ah, beautiful. Right into the pan, this is going to go. Nope, I ain't leaving none behind. I want it all in there, baby. I want it all in there. Yup, all of it. It smells so good. Can't waste it. Wait, I got a little bit right here. Hold up, hold up. Let's get it all out of there. Yup, juice and all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna stir that. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. And remember, if you don't want to add sour cream or cream cheese, you don't have to, okay? This is just me. That's what I like in my hot pot. All right, pot. so now the pie crust has been chilling, 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 chilling in the fridge for one and a half hours. So what I'm going to do now, I've got some uh, wax paper on the, on the counter. I'm just going to lightly flour this. And I'm going to take my dough out of the little plastic bag that I had at the end. Oh, it's been hanging out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just press that a little bit. Just mash it down just a little bit. The warmth of my hands will help to kind of loosen that up a little bit. Turn it over. Mash it down some more. Yeah, I'm just warming it up. Warming up the butter. Now, I'm going to add just a little more flour over the top. Just a little. Not a lot. Okay? Not a lot. I'm going to cover it with the paper. And I'm going to give it a roll, provided I can reach my rolling pin. <laughs> Where are you? All right. So, I'm back. I found my rolling pin. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead now and get this pressed out. This is so much easier than trying to make sure that this doesn't stick to your counter. All right. Isn't that awesome? Well, let's, well, if this paper wasn't sliding all over the place, it would be great. Add a little more flour to this. Cover that up. Then, and it's better that I do it this way because if I just try to roll it the regular way, the paper is not cooperating. And I'm gonna get this pie crust rolled out to be as thick or as wide as my pie pan. Okay. All right, hopefully it will cooperate now. It don't want to. So let me just lift this up. You know, parchment works so much better than wax, I must admit. I'm going to give this a flip so I can get some flour on the underside of this. Just a little, spread that around, cover it with the paper, and roll this out. Okay. It would go a lot faster if I just had the pastry or the dough on the counter. It's 
never this hard, y'all. Seriously, it's never this hard. But for some reason, it is today. And I'm actually gonna put another piece of parchment under there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead now and get this rolled out some more. I've added another piece of wax paper to the bottom. I'm going to add another piece to the top because this paper seemed to want to travel. So I'm going to add it to the top like so with a little flower here. Mockingbirds are not needed. And I'm going to roll this out very carefully. Hopefully this will work. This paper doesn't want to seem to cooperate. All right, but look at that. Doing it this way also makes cleanup a breeze. Makes cleanup a super easy process. Out. Now, I'm not a baker, so I'm not a pie crustologist, okay? <laughs> But it's good and it works for me. And I am sharing with you. Oh, now you want to work right. Oh, look at that. Now we have some egg right. Go figure. Go figure. I'm going to grab my pie plate, turn it upside down on her. See how it's looking. All right. We're almost there. We're almost there. A couple of more rows. Come on back, baby. Maybe the wax paper don't want to give me a couple of more rolls. But let's have a look at it and see. That will work. All right. I'll show you what's next. All right, so let's, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sit my pie plate, just sit it right there on top of that crust for a second. What I am going to do is take my butter and I am going to slightly grease my pan, okay? Just slightly. Okay, this is melted. I really would rather use the butter if it was harder but this will do just gonna give that a nice little buttering right only on the inside don't go around the rims we got something else planned for the rims okay but only on the inside then I'm gonna sit that there then I am going to wash my hands get the butter off <laughs> I don't want to be shining on my hands all right now, I am going to add my mixture that has been hanging out in this pan over here. I am going to get that added to my pot plate. And hopefully you get got a good shot of the pot plate. You do. I'm going to go ahead and get that added. And mix it up first. Oh my lord. That smells so good. This is going to be a little heavy. So I'm not going to be able to pick this up and pour it in with one hand. So two hands it will be. All right. Here it goes. just don't understand. Y'all just don't understand. Y'all just don't get it. It's 
spread that around. Oh, we ain't done. Weeze is not done, Weeze. Gonna spoon in some more. That's a little left. It's all right. I got use for that. Let's smooth that around. Look. All right. Get that even in there. Look at that, y'all. I got that a little pulled on it. I know, but that's okay. I can do that. All right. Turn off the fire. And I'm just going to wipe that rim really quick. Because that rim, I need it. Because I got a little bit right here. And I need to get that off. Okay. And over here too. Get that off of there. All right, now I have my egg wash right here. This is one egg and one tablespoon of water in here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is brush my rims with my egg wash, okay? This could be a little messy, but it's okay. So I'm just going to take my egg wash with my little brush, I'm going to get that all over the edge here. Yep, this is the way you got to do it. Get plenty of egg on there and go around the edges of my pie pan, okay? getting it inside of the pie crust, but that's okay. Let me wipe that off, because I don't want that. All I want is the egg. Okay, yep, it's just gonna be messy. Ain't nothing I can do about it. I just have to clean it up, trying to be all gentle so I don't get egg all over my countertops. Mm -mm. I'm just gonna have to get egg all over my countertops, y'all. Look at that. Egg on the countertop it is, but it's got to get all over this pan, okay? Awesome. Now, I'm coming back to that egg wash in a minute, but before I do, I am going to peel back my crust, the paper off of my pie crust. Come on, don't tell me you stuck to it. Just a little, but that's okay. Now, I am going to carefully roll this over. Actually, you don't want to come off of here either. There we go. Let's lift you up off of the thingamajig. I'm going to use my rolling pin for this, y'all, because I don't think this wants to come off of the wax paper. Never again will I be using wax paper. I have to literally peel this dough off. That's not good. Let me get this off y'all and I'll be back. Now, now that I have the dough co-operating, I'm going to just lift it up with my rolling pin and I'm going to unroll the dough over the pie plate, okay? Let me do the back up. Just gonna carefully unroll it over my pie pan, like so, okay? Now, pull that over. I'm gonna spread that all over, and I'm gonna mash those edges down. Mash them down, mash them down. Mash them down all the way around. Now look, if there's any part of this dough 
that for any reason is thin in some places, that is perfectly okay. I'm going to show you what you can do to fix that, okay? All I'm going to do is the pieces of dough that I cut from around the edges, I will take those and fill those in. But now for me, I don't have any of those pieces. I don't have any at all. So all I'm going to do is just mash down my edges around the pie. Not soon. Oops. Then I'm going to cut off, actually I'm going to fold this under around the edge here because I want that crust to be nice and thick around the edge, okay? So I'm going to fold that under, making my crust thicker around the edge. So, okay. Okay, y'all, so I'm back. And I have my crust all together now. And I'm going to tell y'all something. You got to remember, when that dough starts to warm up, the butter melts, and that really makes the dough more difficult to work with. So that process really has to go by really, really fast. But for me, it didn't go that fast. <laughs> it didn't go that fast. So watch this. This was absolutely the easiest thing ever. So I wanted this to look really, really rustic. So I folded over the edges instead of tucking them under. I went ahead and curved them up and then just made like this rough looking, uh, uh, edge here because I love that little rustic look. You know how farm girls are. We like we like things to look a little rustic and, and neat. Oh, look at that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and brush the top of this with my egg wash, okay? I'm going to give that a nice brush because I want this to be a beautiful golden brown. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I get the edges. That is so important. Get the edges. In fact, let's start with the edges so we don't miss one. Starting with the edges, starting with the edges. Y'all just don't know how good this looks all ready. All right, so now that I have my edges done, I can go back and go over the top of my crust now. A nice heavy layer of my egg wash. Make sure I get that brush everywhere. Yay, yay, yay. Now I'm going to make some little slits in the top. Just nice little ones. Okay. And that's going to allow for my crust to vent if need be. This is going into a 400 degree oven. Shall I show you? Shall I? Let's shall. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So in the oven, that pot pie is going to go. All right, so once, I'm gonna get you back up here. Actually, what I've decided to do, I'm gonna go ahead and add some dried basil to the top of this. I just want it to look nice, okay? Just some light sprinkles of dried basil. That's gonna be some great flavor too, y'all. Into the top of that crust that's gonna go. Look at that. That is so great. Now look, okay, again, a little cayenne pepper over the top. Just a little, not even a lot, just a tad over the top. That's all, no more cayenne. Okay, in the oven this, now look, I'm gonna put this on a baking sheet because I'm positive that this is going to, you know, positive this 
is going to spill over. Well, I'm not positive, but if it does, I want to be ready. So all I'm going to do, and to make this clean up a cinch as well, I'm just going to put a nice piece of uh, foil paper in the pan. Just lay it in the top. That's going to make clean up easy for this, okay? And then on top the pie crust is going to go, you all. Woohoo! All right, let's get that on the pan. Oh, that looks so, ooh. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so in the oven, this is going to go 400 degrees, 30 minutes, okay? 30 minutes, top rack, 400 degrees. I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. All right, y'all, and I will bring you back when we are pulling this baby out of the oven. See you shortly. We're back. I am getting ready to pull the pie out of the oven. It has been hanging out in the oven for 35 minutes, and I am going to go ahead and get it out of the oven now. I am so excited. Turn the oven off. Oh my goodness! All right, this is gonna look so good. I know y'all waiting to see what it tastes, what it looks like, don't? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me take it out and close the other door so it'll burn myself. Whoops! Look at that. All right, see there? Look at that. Don't that look good? Mm-hmm. Look at that! Y'all just don't understand. <laughs> Y'all just don't understand. That's all right. I overstand. Look at that. Y'all, look at that. That looks so good. My goodness. Now look, this has got to sit here on this counter. I'm going to bring y'all a little closer. I need y'all to get a good look so y'all could get the close up of this, Mr. Bill. All right, now let's look. Look at that beautiful, beautiful whiting pot pie, y'all. Y'all just don't, and look, it didn't even bubble over. I thought it was gonna bubble over on the sides, but it didn't. My crust held up nicely around the edges. Remember I told you I folded that crust over to make it a nice, thick, thick uh, outer ring so that if it did bubble a little bit like it did right here, then the crust would hold it inside of the pie plate and it did its job. Look at how beautiful that looks. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna cut into this in about 15 minutes and show you what it, oh, the crust is nice and firm. Oh, nice and crispy crust, hot, nice and crispy. But I am going to show y'all when, I'm gonna give it about 15 minutes or so, and then maybe 30 minutes, cause this joker is smoking. And I will bring you back in 30 mm -hmm. minutes and let you see what that looks like, okay? All right, y'all, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. We are back. All right, so let's go ahead and get, let's slice into this pie. This pie has been sitting here for about 35 minutes, so it has had a chance to really, really cool down. It's nice and cool to the touch. The crust is still nice and flaky. So I'm going to go ahead now, and we're gonna cut. Did y'all hear, did y'all hear that? Listen, 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 watch this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me go ahead and slice into this pie. Ooh, snap. Oh, snap. All right. Okay, now let's get this cut. Y'all, OMG. Now remember, there, there's no crust on the bottom of this pie, okay? This pie is only crusted on the top. 
I don't even want to pick it up. It's so pretty. <laughs> okay, but I got to. You know what I need? I need one of them real thin spatulas. Let me see. I think I see. Well, no, I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay, Georgia. Just go ahead and get into this, okay? Get into this, girl. Let me lift up around the edges first. Oh, snap. Y'all just don't, do y'all hear the crunch that I hear? All right, so now, now let's get into this. O-M-G, here she goes. Ooh. Let's get that there. Do y'all see that crust? Look at that crust. That, that crust refuses to fall apart. Look at that. It refuses to fall apart. I'm just going to grab some more of the filling here. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all just don't understand. <laughs> All right, come on over. Have a look. Look at that crust. Look at how flaky that crust is. Look at it. Just look at it, how it just falls apart. Look at that. Y'all, let me say it again. Y'all just don't understand. Look at, doesn't that look delicious? Can y'all see that? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna enjoy this. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it. Homemade whiting pot pie. Remember, you can substitute the whiting for chicken, for turkey if you like, whatever you whatever you want to put in your pot pie. Or you don't have to put anything in it but vegetables if you like. You could have a veggie pot pie, okay? But anyway, this is going to be a fabulous meal for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make the homemade uh, whiting pot pie. You can do this also with smoked salmon as well. Keep that in mind. Smoked salmon is so good in a pot pie. The upper, the, the, uh, um, the options are just amazing. You have so many, okay? So anyway, thank you all so much for watching Homestead Heart. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And until then, peace and blessings to you all. I will see you next time. Ding, 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 ding. So I just want to bring you back and show you something. Look at this crust, right? This crust is still just, look at there. Just look at there. Even though the filling is not underneath it, the crust is still firm. Did y'all see my key ingredient that I added to the crust? Yep, it was that egg. You typically don't add egg to a pie crust. If you watched my crust video, people don't really add an egg to pie crust, right? It's just typically flour and water and butter that's kind of it but me i know the the impact that that egg with a little that egg that you put inside with that ice water it does make a difference in the flakiness of your crust and the stiffness and firmness of your crust look at that this crust is not falling down into i'm showing you there's nothing underneath right there and the crust is still holding isn't that awesome? So, yep, I shared a secret with y'all. <laughs> it was only a secret if you didn't know. All right, thanks for watching.